we are helping and providing financial inclusion to those people and helping them connect to modern economy if there is no other way for them to do it. We found out that verified local Bitcoin accounts are being sold on Hydra, which is Russia's darknet marketplace. Are you aware of that and uh, what are you doing to address this issue? Well, striving to eliminate fraud is like a game of uh, uh, wake up all. You can, you can never win the battle. What's up, YouTube? I'm your host, Giovanni. Today, I'm joined by Elena Tonoyan, CEO at Local Bitcoins. How are you doing, Elena? Good, thank you, Giovanni, and thank you for having me. Local Bitcoins is a peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin exchange based in Helsinki, Finland. Founded in 2012, it is one of the earliest crypto marketplaces. Its revenue for 2019 amounted to over $29 million. What are the main characteristics that set aside the experience of buying and selling Bitcoin local Bitcoins from the same experience on traditional crypto exchanges? Good question. I mean, uh, the main, I think, uh, difference between uh, us and centralized exchanges is uh, in the fact that we're more uh, serving the developing countries and centralized exchanges are serving developed countries. Except that, of course, uh, in local Bitcoins, we support a lot of um, local and regional payment methods. Uh, while the situation is a bit different with centralized exchanges, they're, uh, they're mainly supporting uh, bank transfers as a uh, form of payment method. Of course, another big thing, in our opinion, is the human factor, because uh, in local Bitcoins, you're buying or selling uh, to another person just like you. So it's Elena buying from Giovanni, which creates a trust on a certain level. Actually, majority of our users, and to be uh, precise, over 85% uh, of our users, uh, during surveys, they say that the reason they're using local Bitcoins is because it's very intuitive and uh, easy to use. So even for people who are not very tech savvy, uh, it is a really easy thing to do to buy and sell Bitcoins. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned the fact that um, you are serving the develop, um, developing countries while uh, centralized exchanges are serving developed countries. But uh, why do you think is that so? Do you think it's because the centralized exchanges uh, require people to have some uh, access to traditional banking services while you don't require that? I think that's uh, one of the reasons, of course. Uh, obviously, bank transfers are one of the uh, main payment methods on local bitcoins as well. But uh, along with that, we offer many others and people who are uh, unbanked or have limited access to those, uh, like, let's say, to traditional banking. Uh, they have much easier time to actually trade on local bitcoins because we have uh, a lot of mobile payments, um, a lot of online payments. So it's a lot easier. It's uh, a lot faster. I suppose that's one of the one of the reasons. Now I would like to talk about your geographical position. So, what are the advantages and the disadvantages of being a Finland-based crypto exchange? Uh, there are a lot of positive sides, obviously, because uh, Finland is a relatively safe and stable country, like politically and economically, to run a business in. Uh, many administrative processes are very transparent, like uh, company registration and taxation. Um, overall, I think in Finland, uh, we have quite high level of education, which puts us in a good position when making um, uh, hiring decisions and getting talents. Uh, but besides that, I think the Bitcoin scene has been uh, developing in Finland from quite um, uh, early uh, uh, years. So we have a lot of uh, Bitcoin enthusiasts and people with knowledge and even experience, which once again puts us in a good position to hire good talents to our team. This has been the case with us. We also find it increasingly more easy to hire nowadays to Finland from abroad. And currently we have over 20 nationalities You're working in our tiny little Helsinki office. Uh, so I think all of those are pretty positive things. On a negative side, you probably know that Finland is not very centrally located, so we're far away from everything. Um, well, if we compare it to London and New York, you are in the middle of uh, uh, all the happenings, all the events. So it's quite a lot easier for you to be in the center of it. But uh, from Finland, it's a bit more harder for us. Uh, though after Corona, <laughs> things might be shifted to a different direction and we might be attending probably a lot of things remotely, but this remains to be seen. Um, uh, on the negative side, probably, the fact that uh, Finland is generally not very cheap country to uh, 
run a business. Yeah, I've been there. I, I haven't, I didn't have the feeling it was a cheap country in general. <laughs> that is true. That is true. So uh, that's, that's another curiosity that I have. Why are you not supporting any other cryptocurrency apart from Bitcoin? Well, uh, to be entirely honest with you, I don't think there is a, a specific reason why we're not supporting uh, any other coins. It's just that initially uh, the company's focus has been on Bitcoin. Um, and this is what we have been putting all our focus and efforts uh, to uh, actually serve the Bitcoin users as well as we can. Uh, though uh, I'm not sure if you know, but currently and for I think last two, three years, we're supporting uh, altcoins as a payment method to buy and sell Bitcoins. Um, so uh, that, that is one of the available options. And in the future, uh, we are also considering that we might actually provide full support for other coins. But this remains to be seen. According to a report by Cypher Trace, local bitcoins is the number one platform for the amount of criminal crypto funds received in 2019. That was the third year in a row that you were ranked first in the ranking. What have you been doing to address this issue? Uh, local bitcoins has always been uh, uh, proactively seeking ways to fight uh, illicit activities happening on the platform. And uh, as you know, in September 2019, we implemented the uh, uh, AML and KYC procedures, which actually had uh, direct uh, and significant effect on um, uh, this issue. So uh, on, uh, on transactions sent to uh, dark markets. Uh, to, to give you more numbers, I think in um, December 2019, the volumes sent to dark market transact like dark markets have dropped by 50%. And uh, by spring 2020, if I'm not mistaken, it was already by May, uh, volumes sent to dark markets have dropped by over 70%. So um, uh, while we have no means to uh, validate the third party reports, we do definitely acknowledge the uh, fact that prior to implementation of uh, AML KYC procedures, those uh, volumes of transactions sent to dark markets were a lot higher. Uh, but we are doing continuous work and putting a lot of uh, uh, efforts uh, into uh, solving this issue. And we expect the dark market transaction volumes to drop even more within time. So to answer your question, the outcome, outcome for 2020 is expected to be a lot different. Clear. So last year, as you said, you implemented these KYC and AML procedures in order to comply with EU regulation. So don't you think that for the sake of compliance, local Bitcoins lost a major, a major competitive advantage compared to other crypto exchanges, which is customers' privacy? Well, we did lose some competitive advantage. That is uh, a fact. Uh, but then again, uh, we are a Finnish company uh, operating under Finnish jurisdiction and Finland was one of the uh, first pioneering countries to implement fifth AMLB. Uh, and since we wanted to run a legitimate business, we made a choice to be compliant and to become a, uh, a regulated entity. Uh, and also in the future, we expect the uh, more and more regulation to come. For example, the travel rule, which is going to affect probably all the exchanges. And maybe since we are already uh, regulated and we uh, already have more or less uh, developed uh, uh, processes, this will actually give us competitive edge in the future. I would like to point out also that uh, in the early days, people used local Bitcoins because it was anonymous. Uh, but nowadays they use local Bitcoins because they need Bitcoin and want safe and legit uh, service uh, to, to uh, buy Bitcoins. And this also reflects uh, a change in the profile of a Bitcoin user. Um, and also last few months we were seeing positive growth across all regions and people like obviously we still remain um, profitable, which is a great thing. And uh, people have more trust in our service. So... Yes, there, there, we did lose some kind of competitive advantage, but nothing that we couldn't overcome. Mm -hmm. Right. But still, like as far as I know, the trading volume on local Bitcoins dropped by around 50% from June 2019 to January 2020. So do you think that the new verification procedures are somehow related to this drop? And if not, what is the cause for this drop? 
So local bitcoins implemented AML and uh, KYC processes in um, uh, September 2019. Uh, after that, we definitely saw a decline in our uh, trade volume, finding its uh, bottom in uh, February 2020. There are a few possible reasons for that. Um, first of all, we were, as I mentioned, pioneers to implement fifth MLD. Our processes were not well de de developed. It was uh, there was a lot of uncertainty. Uh, we went through uh, a lot of complications. We have done a lot of hard work, but. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, it was expected that some of the things will not go very smoothly for us. For example, customer onboarding and verification processes in the beginning have had uh, some delays. And unfortunately, this is one of the reasons we uh, lost some of our customers who were trying very actively to gain back. Um, uh, some people did not want to lose, lose their anonymity and uh, uh, dropped naturally. And um, something about our fraud rates that might be uh, interesting as well, uh, compared to the amount of successful trades and overall volumes that are happening on local Bitcoins, the fraud rates have been always low for us. However, uh, after implementing AML and KYC, these uh, numbers have gone even uh, lower, which means that we actually got rid of the bad actors. Uh, and um, yes, this is uh, <laughs> this is probably uh, those reasons that affected on the uh, on the drop of uh, trade volume. Uh, but we would like to think that us being uh, a regulated entity also will uh, is creating and will create more trust in the future uh, for more Bitcoin curious people to to join. And evidence of uh, trust actually creation can be our. Um, for example, trust pilot reviews, which are almost uh, five stars from 20 plus thousand people. Uh, I think this is good indication that actually there is a lot of trust in our service. Um, not sure if this uh, uh, answered the question, but um, yeah, to, to say once again that now looking at the last two, three months, we can see growth happening almost across all regions, not just one single region, across all regions, which is uh, indicating a wide and healthy uh, growth uh, and uh, in demand for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Clear. So talking about the new, this new verification procedure that you put in place, uh, we found out that verified local Bitcoin accounts are being sold on Hydra, which is Russia's darknet marketplace. Are you aware of that? And uh, what are you doing to address this issue? Uh, yes, we're uh, very well aware of the problem and uh, we already have pretty solid measures in place uh, to detect, identify uh, those accounts as, as soon as possible. Uh, Currently, uh, we block those accounts as soon as we are able to identify that they have been uh, sold or uh, hacked. Uh, but obviously, uh, more has to be done in that uh, regards. And well, striving to eliminate fraud is like a game of uh, uh, whack a mole. You can <laughs> you can never win the battle, but uh, uh, you know every every now and then new problem pops up and. Uh, you, you just have to minimize uh, the risks and uh, deal with the problems as, as they come. Also, uh, well, I would like uh, to say something about our Bitcoin community, because uh, especially our user community, they are being uh, very active players in uh, keeping the platform um, clean. Because the moment uh, there is any suspicious activity detected by them on the platform, or like you say, uh, like you said, some accounts are being sold, we get actually reports uh, quite quickly from them, and uh, hopefully react as uh, soon as possible in order to take measures and uh, block those accounts. So thank you to our <laughs> Bitcoin community and our users for for uh, helping us keep the platform clean. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So uh, this year, local Bitcoins registered a spike of transaction volumes, mainly from Argentina, Colombia and Venezuela. How do you explain the geographical concentration of volume in, uh, Latin, in these Latin American countries? Yeah, uh, so our volumes in uh, Venezuela increased because there is a real use case for Bitcoin there uh, due to their collapsed financial system. 
well, I would say that it's pretty common thing that when uh, uh, market grows, this big market can push the trading volumes in neighboring countries as well. Uh, and we believe that this might be the case for um, Colombia and Argentina due to Venezuelan migration. Uh, well, uh, with Argentina, it's um, also separately that it has uh, faced its own economical difficulties and capital uh, control restrictions. So we believe the country has a huge uh, uh, potential for Bitcoin due to its, well, first of all, well-educated population and a culture of uh, storing value and uh, other assets in their own currency. But generally speaking, we tend to see growth in those markets uh, uh, for us where the uh, economic and political situation is not very stable. Uh, and as to Argentina uh, and Venezuela, obviously, we're very happy to be uh, uh, in those countries uh, where there is actually a need for us, where we are helping and providing financial inclusion to those people and helping them connect to modern economy if there is no other way for them to do it. That was Elena Tonoyan, CEO at Local Bitcoins. If you like the interview, smash the like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time. Coin Telegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.